Hey friends, Ash here with Gent Sense, and I've got a miniature haul for you guys here today, an unboxing first impression video. And today we're on the hunt for hidden gems. Hopefully one of these is gonna be a hidden gem. Maybe none of them will be, but hopefully at least one of these will be. So four fragrances today. First up, Mercedes-Benz Select Night. After that, Azaro Sport. And this one is kind of interesting to me because this is a new fragrance for 2020 and I have not heard a single thing about this fragrance being released or being an upcoming fragrance release or anything like that. It just popped up on discounters. So Azaro Sport, and I even searched for this to see if I could find like some notes or some information on it or something, nothing. I'm sure one of you is gonna point out where this is online, but as of me filming this, the only information I can find on this is on discounters. Carolina Herrera Chic for Men, another one that I picked up, and Osmal Wanderer. So four different fragrances, a lot to talk about. Let's jump into this. Let's just open up this Ajmal first, Ajmal Wanderer. This one was fairly inexpensive. I just kind of threw it into the cart right before I checked out. So hopefully it is good. I'm operating under the assumption that this is probably a clone style fragrance, but I don't know that for sure. Since we have four fragrances and lots to talk about, I'm not gonna show you the boxes right up close and everything. That way we can get through this a little bit quicker, but you can see it right here a little bit. It's got kind of a textured feel to it. It looks a little bit like wood grain on the box and then the back is smooth and has the ingredient information there. Badge code on the bottom of the box tells me that this was made January 2020. And here is the bottle. Pretty plain. It reminds me a little bit of um, like the Xenia Womo bottle with the indentations there on the bottle which are on the side here. Other than that, just a clean, clear, plain bottle. And there is the cap. It does click into place. And let's go ahead and give it a spray. Atomizer's not too bad. Hmm, yeah. This is probably what a lot of you out there are expecting. This is an Aventus style fragrance. Yeah, sure is. It's not too bad though. On the sweeter side, no smoke really. Pineapple, bergamot, vanilla. Yeah. Aventus style fragrance, smells pleasant, smells nice. Not anything that's necessarily gonna set the world on fire, but better than some of the Aventus style fragrances that I've smelled in the past. And let me read off this note breakdown really quickly for this fragrance. I looked this up on uh, Osmal's website. It's like they threw everything in here. Melon, pineapple, plum, pear, pink pepper, black pepper, lemon, bergamot, lily of the valley, freesia, jasmine, leather, oak moss, cedar, patchouli, ambergris, white musk. That's a hefty note breakdown. So we know what this is. We're gonna keep on going for, you know, 20, 25 bucks. Smells like it'd be an okay Aventus alternative, though I wouldn't put it as one of the best of the best out there. Next up, let's open up Azaro Sport from 2020, a new release. Now, admittedly, guys, I don't have a whole lot of faith that Azaro Sport is going to be an awesome fragrance. Not always, but a lot of times, when a fragrance company makes a specific sport fragrance, it ends up being really boring and ends up being a fragrance best suited for the gym or really, really high heat situations. Essentially a shower gel, clean, fresh sort of fragrance. That's what I'm expecting here. So if it's anything beyond that, if it's interesting or has more depth, more richness, whatever, I'm gonna be very excited. So here is the box, plain white box that says Azaro Sport. On the back, you've got the A for Azaro. You've got your ingredient information here on the back, little stripe on the top, and then your badge code on the bottom of the box. And here is the bottle. It is a bit on the cheaper side as far as the look. It says Azaro Sport. It's got this really thin plastic cap that kind of fits snugly over the top of the bottle. It doesn't click into place, it just fits snugly over top. And then your badge code here is actually etched on the bottom of the bottle. I have no clue what the note breakdown is for this fragrance. I don't know anything about it. It does have a blue coloration, so that does lead me to believe, again, that it's gonna be a clean, fresh sort of fragrance, which is what you expect with sports scents. So let's go ahead and spray this one on. I am a little bit worried that I can't find information about this at all. Almost like as Aro said, ah, this one really sucks. That was the cap. 
Let's just throw it out there and see what happens. My first impression is this really sucks. <laughs> it's not good. Ah, it's alcoholy, a good amount of alcohol, even after it settles, when you smell it, you can still pick up that rubbing alcohol kind of scent off the top. Ugh. What is Azaro doing? <laughs> they made Azaro Wanted Tonic, which is also a casual, sporty gym type of fragrance, and it's not very good. And then they said, you know what? That's not good enough. We need another one. And then they released this, which somehow smells even cheaper. So as aquatic notes, it's got a little pop of fresh kind of herbalness to it. Wouldn't surprise me if there's uh, juniper in there. I would imagine there is supposed to be citrus in here. It smells to me more like lemon. Again, I could be wrong. I don't have the note breakdown for this or anything like that. That's just how it's coming across. And sort of a fresh white musk. But this is really crappy. As far as gym fragrances go, it could make a decent one of those in a throwaway kind of sense, where you spray it on go into the gym or spray it on, go outside where it's extremely hot and you don't worry at all about using the fragrance because it's not really one of your good fragrances. It's just like a throwaway kind of scent. You know, those situations where it's better to be wearing something than nothing at all. That's kind of where I would see this being used. It's nothing really attention grabbing. It is clean, definitely clean and fresh. It's already smelling a little bit light off my skin. Of course, that could also be because I keep smelling it over and over, could be going nose blind to it a little bit. Not impressive. Yeah. Ooh. Next up, let's do Carolina Herrera Chic for men. Now, this is one that I have been putting off getting for years at this point. Back when I first started my channel, this was a fragrance that I had intentions of buying, and for whatever reason, I just kept putting it off, putting it off, putting it off, and now I finally purchased it. Now, I don't mind personally, but some people would be unhappy with this. The box is a bit beat up here. So if you can see there, it's already coming loose at the edge, and that's how it was when I got it, when I uh, unwrapped it just now, so the glue has kind of come and done all the way down here. And that is because this box has been resealed. So I'm not gonna go into an extreme amount of detail here, but with gray market discounters, sometimes they will remove parts from the box that could possibly help identify where the fragrance is sourced from. So right here on the bottom of the box, uh, you can see that this portion was actually cut out right here. There's a little rectangular part of the box that's been removed, and then there is tape over top of it right here. The fragrance is still completely legit. It's just that was removed from the box and then it was resealed. And you can go online and, and Google more information about uh, gray market discounters with fragrances if you want to and get a better understanding for all of that. And here's a look at the bottle. Just a little square bottle. This is two ounces. And then the atomizer, little square atomizer as well, actually reminds me a little bit of the old uh, M7 atomizers. I'll go ahead and spray this one on. You can see there it had not been sprayed before, so still new. I had to pump it a couple times before it sprayed. Of the fragrances that I've smelled so far, this one's my favorite. Don't know how much that's saying exactly when one of the fragrances is an Aventus-ish fragrance and the other is a kind of throwaway gym scent, but it's the best so far. It doesn't smell exactly like how I was expecting, but it is nice. So this one has melon and a citrus combo right off the top, orange, bergamot, lemon, but then it also has sandalwood and cardamom kind of right there with those notes, hand in hand, right at the beginning. Typically, you would expect it to be more like this, where the melon, the citrus, uh, really sings in the opening, but instead they're balanced right away. So you have a little bit of this fruity sweetness, but then you have spice, creaminess, a little bit of woods right in there with them, right in with the citrus. And it makes a, an interesting sort of combo. This is nice. It doesn't blow me away right off the top, but it is nice. And I could see this having a lot of different uses. This is one that would work during the day, during the night, on a date, springtime, fall time, that sort of fragrance to me 
at least initially. Now let's open up Select Night and then we'll work back through these fragrances one last time before we wrap this one up. I do have the original Mercedes-Benz Select, which is an Aventus sort of fragrance. Here you can see the box, Mercedes-Benz Select, size and concentration down there at the bottom. Nothing doing on the sides or the top or the back. And then on the bottom, you have your badge code and your ingredient information. And here is your bottle. Same as the Mercedes-Benz Select bottle, only this one, a bit darker, hence the name, Night. And your badge code is etched into the glass here on the side down toward the bottom. This one has gotten some mixed reviews online. Atomizer is really good. This one I can smell right away. Of all of the fragrances, this one grabs my attention the most when I first sprayed it on, because from a distance, you can pick it up immediately. The other ones were a little bit closer to the skin initially, but the top notes here are just really jumping off my skin. That's interesting, yeah. So I can see why this would be divisive. It is definitely darker. Cardamom and lavender, I can pick that up right away, especially the lavender. Slight powder to the lavender, a little bit sweet. My initial thought was I was picking up something a little bit anisic sort of in the fragrance, but that could just be um, because of all these other fragrances that I've been smelling. Sweet, but not cloyingly so. Vanilla and the lavender here, as I said before, a little bit, little bit powdery, but not too much. Don't really get much bergamot. Yeah, not too much citrus going on here. Warm, darker spices, but with a sweet edge and a touch of powder. Little bits of wood, but not too much, not too heavy. The last two fragrances, definitely the best in this bunch. <laughs> Hidden Gem, yeah, I don't know about that. I was hoping for one, but sometimes your hopes are not answered. Let's work back through here, give these each another smell, since they've been on my skin a little bit longer, see if they come across a little bit differently. A little bit better, a little bit worse, and then we'll call this a video. So, first up, Ajmal Wanderer. Yes. <laughs> little leather coming out now, not really smoky. A little touch of woods. Some of that residual sweetness, that fruity sweetness from the opening, and vanilla still here. 100% Aventus style fragrance. Not one of the top tier Aventus style fragrances though, so I wouldn't call this a must own Aventus style fragrance. If you're into collecting Aventus style fragrances, here's another one for you, but it's not up there with the heavy hitters. Next up, Azaro Sport, and this is one I did have hopes for. Okay, let's see how it smells. Bland. It would not surprise me if this is in TJ Maxx or Ross's all across America for 15, 20 bucks in the next few months. There is a reason they did not advertise this. This is quality on par with those um, original Penguin fragrances that you can pick up from TJ Maxx for $15. I think it was uh, original Penguin premium blend stuff like that um, in, in that kind of quality range. That's what we're talking about here. This one is possibly a little bit below the Penguin. The presentation is below the Penguin. This is a disappointment, yeah. I was hoping, I was really hoping, without seeing a note breakdown or anything, that this would be, this would be a killer. You know, one of those hidden gems for summertime, maybe something with a little twist. Yeah, mm, it sucks. Chic, I like this. Sandalwood Tonka Amber coming out more. So you're getting this creamy sort of sweetness, a little, little touch of sexy spiciness over top, but it's not real heavy, the spice. This is pretty quickly going more toward that almost creamy sweet side of things with a little sprinkling of spice over top and a little hint of sweetness. It is good though. I like that one. Hidden Gem, if you want to call it hidden because it's been overshadowed by other releases, maybe. I'd have to give it more wares before I call it a gym, but really solid, yeah, I like this. As it goes along, it gets better. And Select Night. This one is the most unique of the bunch. Sandalwood, Cedar, and Gaiac kind of combining to get this slightly creamy, sweet woodiness, but not at all like realistic woods like a romanticized version of woods made sweeter with any edges removed with the touch of creaminess. Of course, the vanilla is going to help with that. The lavender fading away a little bit. Cardamom, more prominent, but not the same kind of cardamom that you'll find in fragrances like La Nuit de Lome because the, the powderiness from the lavender kind of offsets a lot of that sweet, kind of spiciness that you would typically get from cardamom. Little touch of orange blossom, but the orange blossom is not coming across at all 
like a, a very fresh white floral. Instead, the way it's used here almost gives it a, a slight dark tinge to the scent. You know, I don't hate it. I know it's divisive, but as far as Mercedes Benz fragrances go, it's a little bit interesting. I could absolutely 100% see why some people would not like that and why some people would write that off right away. 100%, I don't think it's a super safe blind buy. I don't think it's the type of fragrance that for a lot of people, they're gonna smell it and immediately fall in love with it, but it could be a grower. A grower, not a shower. Okay guys, so these have settled down. It's been a while now. These have dried down. I'm gonna fly through them really quickly. Wanderer, like I said before, a vintage style fragrance. Not too bad, better than a lot of the ones out there, but not one of the top tier. Azaro Sport, I was really harsh on this one. Said that it sucked. This is, it's a passable gym fragrance, a passable casual warm weather fragrance. It's not that it smells offensive. It's not that it smells necessarily bad. It's just boring. If you could pick this up for a cheap price, you know, it could be serviceable for a ton of guys out there. So I didn't want to leave the impression that I think it's offensive and just disgusting smelling or anything like that. That's not the case. It's just boring. Chic, nice, creamy, inviting, enticing, a little bit soft, but pretty good. And then Select Night, this one going more sandalwood, vanilla, little creamy, a little sweet, a little powdery. Not too bad either. So just put on it really quickly, run through those dry downs in a very basic sense. All right, guys, that's gonna wrap up this haul and first impression video. These two for me clearly best of the bunch. As far as which one is most wearable for most people, probably chic. If you've smelled these fragrances, let me know what you think about them in the comments below. As always, thanks so much for hanging out with me today. Stay safe out there, and I'll see you guys tomorrow with another fragrance video. Oh. Oh. Oh.